Hello all. So in this tutorial, we will wrap up our hardware design. So in the last tutorial, uh, we have discussed implementation of layers and combining them together. Uh, now one thing uh, that is left is usually from the output layer, you need to find out which neuron is giving the maximum output. And we can say like, okay, so the input is classified to the label which is represented by this particular neuron. Again, we are looking at 10 outputs here. Uh, because the application we are aiming at is handwritten digit recognition. So there will be 10 digits. That's why we have 10 neurons. So we need to find out uh, which of these neurons have the highest value. So usually in software implementation, uh, that is done through something called the softmax function implementation. Uh, this is how that function will look like. Uh, this is that function. So you find this exponential and... Uh, are divided by the sum of exponential output from all other neurons. So again, you can, of course, see it's very difficult to do this in hardware, pure hardware. So one way to do it is uh, you may take all these output from the hardware neural network to the PS and do this part in software. That is one solution. Or we can uh, do it in hardware, but not exactly a softmax function. Instead of that, I am calling it as a uh, hardmax function. That means we'll have a module which takes the output from this output layer from all the neurons and it will simply find uh, which neurons output is highest uh, without normalizing it. Okay. So you can see uh, uh, this is the output from the fourth layer, the last layer, uh, x out valid. You can see uh, that's how actually going into the state machine also. So if there is a next layer, the output from the shift register will uh, go to that layer but we have only four layers but the state machine will be still uh, there in the code uh, i will explain you why it is that because of some design automation it is still there or we can remove it later so this this part is uh, really a, a dummy code okay this is not doing anything this last state machine uh, what is happening is this output is actually going to this module max finder module Okay. and inside max finder you can see like he gets the data and again it is one dimensional we are multiplying the data width with the number of neurons in the output layer here we have 10 and data width is 16 and we are taking it and on every clock he compares like our software implementation but he takes like 10 clock cycles to find out which is the largest number. You can do it in one clock if you use a big combination circuit, but the clock performance will be horrible. That's why we don't do it in one clock. We take 10 clocks or the number of clocks equal to the number of neurons in the output layer and compare one by one and find out which is the largest number. So that's what our max finder is doing. That is one thing. Another thing that we needed was, yeah, if the weights and biases if they are not configured from this file, uh, those have to be sent by some other controller, like a processor. Okay, So there should be some provision for that. So at the top, we have uh, added an Axie Lite interface, you can see here. So that processor can communicate with our neural network. So neural network will be implemented like an IP, and it will have two interfaces now. One stream interface for sending this data to the input layer, and this Axie Lite interface for configuration as well as reading out the final data. So you can see, and we also have a Axie Lite wrapper here. This is our standard code generated by our IP generator, Axie Lite wrapper. Okay, and there are many registers inside that. Okay, it's easy to see here. So we have a register called weight register, bias register, output register, layer register, neuron register. Many registers are there. So suppose uh, the processor he wants to configure the first weight inside say first neuron in the first layer what the processor should do is first he should configure in which layer he wants to configure okay so he will write that layer number to this register address 3 so from processor point of view address 12 he will say 12 then he will write to which neuron he wants to write in this particular layer to this address, address 16, then he will actually write the weight value to this weight register. Now, all these registers, they are directly wired out uh, at the top. You can see, yeah, it's going out as layer number, neuron number, weight value. Okay, so they are directly coming here. 
so they are directly coming here where weight value weight valid bias valid bias value and layer number and i have shown you in, in the previous case all this information are going to layer and ultimately all of them and uh, they are going to our neuron okay uh, if you remember our neuron has this interface uh, which basically has a weight value bias value layer number neuron number and only if these values are matching with the current value of this neuron from where he is getting it they are all configured here uh, through the parameter so only if these values are matching he will take those values and store it in his internal weight register memory or in the bias register so that's why we have added this actually light wrapper now again more things we have you will see like there is an interrupt signal here okay again when we interface our neural network with the processor the processor wants to know whether he has done a particular classification or not so once the neural network detects say one new digit he will assert this interrupt signal and you can see like from where that signal is coming that signal is coming from the output of our max finder so once he finds the maximum value he will make this signal high for one clock okay so that will act as an interrupt to the processor so he will find like okay this high has finished uh, one classification and he can read out so from where he will read this is the output from the max finder and this output and you can see where is that output connected that output is connected to our axi light wrapper and from axi light wrapper this is one, that one neural network out in and out and that is connected connected to output register it is one level pipelining and that output register is two so if the processor reads from two that means uh, address eight he'll be actually reading from the output of this max finder okay so that's how things are going to happen so initially processor he may configure all weights and biases then he will stream the input data maybe using a dma controller to our neural network once he finishes this uh, classification he'll assert an interrupt that will go to the processor and when he gets the interrupt he will come and read from this address two and he will find like okay this is the detected digit so this value will be either 0 1 2 3 any value between 0 to 9 for our application so depending upon the application yeah which our neuron has highest value uh, he will be able to read it that's that logic if you want to read the output from the output layer directly uh, by bypassing this heart max layer that's also possible so here you will see uh, there is a small logic here uh, the output from our last layer that is not only going to this heart max but it is going to this small logic also so what he does is similar to our shift register whenever this signal comes actually read enabled he will shift this register right by data width okay like 16 bit in our particular case so and uh, the rightmost data it is assigned to this signal actually read data which is actually going to the axi light interface okay so axi read data this one so if the processor reads from 5 that is address 20 he can directly read from the output layer only catch is when he reads each time he will be reading from different neurons from here when he reads from this this address 20 for first time the output will be coming from neuron 0 then next time when he reads from here from here from here so on and so forth because of that shifting operation okay and once he reads from all 10 neurons if he reads again uh, before getting a next interrupt the output will be uh, undefined so practically it will be just zero so that option is also there now there are few more features like uh, you can give a soft reset which we discussed before to our neural network if you want to reset in between so that soft reset you can see it is odd with the axi reset okay so soft reset is actually connected to the control register in the axi light interface and uh, this one control register 0 bit is going as that soft reset 
so you can use it and status register and you can see like that status register will become one whenever an interrupt is asserted it is the same as that interrupt signal and it will be automatically cleared whenever the processor reads from the status register he doesn't have to uh, write clear previously we were explicitly writing and clearing the status register but in this case as soon as the processor reads from status register he just clears it because we have only one bit status there is no confusion like why an interrupt came okay so that's uh, another feature that we added so all these things are happening through our axi light interface okay so that concludes more or less our entire hardware design now this entire thing we are going to call it as Zynet uh, because it's a neural network for Zinc. But this has nothing to do with uh, Zinc explicitly. This design is totally portable. You can implement it in any FPGA or even from different vendors. It doesn't matter because we didn't use any IP calls explicitly in this design. But still, uh, we are just calling it Zynet. Uh, so uh, if you want to add this axi light with other FPGA, you need some uh, soft processor which has this axi interface like even microblaze uh, processor will do if you are not doing it on zinc okay if you are doing it on vertex uh, 6 7 or something like that you can still use it but we need a microblaze processor as the uh, processor like our ps we need something okay now in addition to that, for complete implementation, what you need is all the weight and bias values. Again, that depends upon the particular application. So here you can see I have a lot of MIF files, uh, which is representing these weights for each neuron. So it is always like W represents it's a weight file. The first number represents the layer number and the last digit represents uh, the neuron which uh, within that layer so that you can easily find like uh, to which neuron each file belongs to right so like uh, this is like weight for the neuron in the second layer 16th neuron in the second layer layer one and layer two uh, both have 30 neurons each okay so that's how the weight values how you can generate this file we will discuss in uh, next tutorial because uh, manually doing it is not easy right you can see like these are quite big and they are also in binary and you need some flexibility to decide like what is the data width currently we are always using 16 bit but we are not uh, stuck with 16 you can use 16 8 32 64 any width there will be flexibility so that i will discuss uh, how we do this design automation how we can generate all these files automatically uh, we can discuss and same for the bias also and the sigmoid mif files if you are using sigmoid that script i have already shown you how we can do it using python script okay another important file here is this include file include.v uh, previously we have seen it but it had only one parameter like a train or not but now if you look at that file it has uh, much more data now i guess things are much clearer to you so this pre-train will basically say with the, whether it is pre-trained or not and this one basically saying totally how many layers are in our neural network what is the data width used this is saying how many neurons in first layer how many weights are there for each neuron in first layer and the activation type used by the neuron so same way it is discussing uh, it is specifying for all the layers and you can see like uh, there is a fifth layer also but it is not a layer in, in this sense there is no neurons there you can see the type is written as heart max okay so these details are required where, while we are implementing you can also see the sigmoid size here and what is the integer width used for specifying the weight uh, there is no explicitly data on how many integers are used for specifying the input data or output data that is automatically taken care we will see why is it like that now this include file is important because uh, you will see in the instantiation all the information to the layers and ultimately to the neurons is coming from this 
instantiation file that's why previously i told like uh, don't worry about these parameters here they are all dummy what really matters is what is configured from the topmost module that is designer.v and he is configuring it by taking that information from this include file okay so that's how all those information are going here so that's about our hardware design so in the next tutorial we will actually simulate it and see whether it is really working we can also compare the performance in terms of accuracy for sigmoid as well as relu implementation and can compare with our previous result from resource utilization and clock performance and we may conclude which one is better for this particular application okay it cannot be a, a generic conclusion but for this particular application who is performing better uh, we can get a idea okay so that's it see you in the next tutorial thank you